What is up down and sideways, all you beautiful individuals? We have returned to Liga Unlock, Eric and Mark here with you beauties for another installment of your domestic power rankings, LCS, LEC, LCK, and whew, let me tell you, the biggest shakeup, biggest shift, especially towards the top of the standings this week, is in the LCS, and obviously... The biggest and most obvious reason for that is uh, Cloud9 dropping five spots out of that first uh, place position. We forgave the vain mid. They were having some fun cooking and draft. I don't think we can forgive a 0-3 and three super week to the likes of Immortals taking wins, a shaky team liquid. There are a whole lot of things that do not look good for C9 right now. Any of you dog owners out there, you ever go for a walk with your dog and you let the leash all fully extended and you're like, ah, I, I trust it. You're going to behave. You're going to do everything great. And then bam, the next second he's doing something he's not supposed to do. He's in the trash can. He's in the middle of traffic. The rest of the walk, it's a short leash is the way that it goes. And that's kind of how you got to look at cloud nine now in this situation because that was as bad as a super we can get for one of the lcs's top teams is what happened this past weekend for cloud nine and i think the biggest thing that we saw and i touched on this a bit it just the classic na it feels like cloud nine are almost entitled to just be better wait for the other team to make mistakes and capitalize but they weren't very proactive in seeming how to take over the map how to do anything other than run it down na ram style and win 5v5 and i think there is certain ways and certain parts of this weekend you know focusing in on cloud nine that you can take away and talk about the pro you know progression of the lcs and seeing these pushback from all these other teams against what we assume to be that top level team in the in the region Cloud9 dropping it the way that they did is not giving you that type of reaction, right? You're not going, oh my God, Team Liquid, this is amazing. They're all the way at this up at this level. You're going, sure, there's a couple check marks we can cross off and feel better about some of these other squads. But those big red X's that you're putting up from this week for Cloud9, you're feeling even worse about. And I never thought we'd be talking about them in the bottom three and it's it's individual mechanics too you saw some whist from jojo berserker and vulcan are getting 2v2'd by seemingly everybody in the league so question marks across the board still of course so much time and opportunity for them to bounce back but did not see this roster looking this bad in any given week one of the teams that took them down now jumps them in the standings and mark immortals and cloud nine after three weeks they got the same record Huh? Pretty, pretty crazy to think that that's what's going on in the LCS. Picking up unexpected wins against Cloud9 is a path to get to that record for these squads. You're looking at Immortals. I think that there is some recognition over for the, imp the young Korean imports coming over, Mr. Castle and Mask, and what they've been able to do for the team. Players that have already been there for Immortals. Mr. Tactical down in the bottom lane. Of course, uh, a very up and down, mostly down in the last little bit trajectory in the LCS. So getting a bounce back here for Immortals. And then you look over at Team Liquid and specifically that win that they get against Cloud9 this weekend. That's exactly the type of power, type of traction that this team needs to get into that conversation, into that picture, into that topic of the top teams of the LCS. Yeah, Immortals just brushes past Cloud9 and it's like they steal some of their essence as they go higher up in these rankings. Um, 100 Thieves was a squad that did take down IMT. So, you know, 100 Thieves, still some question marks, but they're sitting pretty solidly in that number four spot. You're feeling good, not great about them. Good, not great. But one of the things that I think that we are seeing kind of warm up for the rest of the LCS is Mr. General Sniper up in that top side for this yes. 100 Thieves team. He has proven to be that difference maker. This has been obviously you know again a, a debut and a learning experience and all those things that come with it but learning on the fly and putting it to the test day in day out when you get to these super weeks 
that is one of those hurdles that you got to check with these young players. General Sniper passing it for 100 thieves. Yeah, and I think he's at a higher level than even anticipated so early on. After just a few weeks, he really has hit the ground running. Uh, so now 100 Thieves tied at 4-3 and three with both TL, who move up a couple of spots. A lot of that because of that Cloud9 win. And NRG, who also, they're thanking Cloud9 for having such a bad week because they're dropping games to Immortals 2 and Shopify Rebellion. It's hard, though. Like, you have them second still, and it's now really close between that 2-6 to six area. It's not too egregious. There's still a lot of positives, obviously, from NRG, and I still feel like if they match up against any of these other squads right now, they'd come out on top, but still not feeling great about them either. You want to have more confidence in this NRG squad and what they can do, and especially the type of power that they should be able to swing and swing consistently at the top of the table in the LCS. We've seen already that they've got what it takes to take that level, to be those challengers, to be the defending champions of the LCS. The question is, are you going to be that every single day of the week when you're stepping into the LCS arena? This past weekend was the answer of no from this team. I think that's the big one that I'm looking for from this NRG team moving forward is consistency. Whether you're talking about Palafox in the mid lane, looking up at Dokla up the top, or even if you're going down to the bottom lane saying FBI and who he, even if they have been, I think, an improvement over what you were getting last year with Ignar, you got to be getting more from them on a consistent basis. And even though they're holding on to that two spot, it is now razor thin between squads like Team Liquid and 100 Thieves right behind them. But as NRG and Cloud9 struggle into the traffic jam of the middle of the LCS, it's FlyQuest stepping on faces all the way up to the top. An immaculate 3-0 weekend out of them. Masu and Busio are 2v2ing Berserker and Vulcan multiple times. Jensen's picking up quadra kills and it looks like a resurgence. We got Inspired playing DPS. Junglers, it's just a good time to be a Fly fan. Oh man, this is Ivern doing a two-step dunk on the rim with the Dunkmaster skin. The way that things went this weekend for FlyQuest, that perfect week as you talked about. And again, in contrast to what we have seen from Cloud9, NRG, the other teams that we want to see or are expect to see at the top of the table of the LCS, FlyQuest usurps all of them, grabbing this number one spot with the way that they played. You outlined it, you've got pretty much everything operating at that top level you're seeing the creativity that we wanted to with a lineup that was going to have whippo and inspired specifically i want to talk about inspired jumping on to some of these trends in the jungle as you mentioned the dps guys pumping out some of those ones the brand of course being that big one that we see across a, a lot of these major regions this is the fly quest popping off masu down in the bottom lane picking up and getting a little bit hypey himself that is good signs for this fly quest team yeah, Masu playing with unbelievable levels of confidence, always being forward uh, as an AD carry, which is something we especially love to see in NA. Playing with that confidence down in that bot lane and Whippo just absorbing pressure, even if it results in him dying. His team's getting stuff elsewhere. So FlyQuest is now the new team to put your money on uh, and bet on that horse in the LCS with that 6-1 and one start. LEC side of things, we had another day. More action of playoff round two, I guess. We're bumping ahead because we had the winners matchups. And uh, immediately we got to look at the top of this table because you had the showdown Fnatic versus G2. Shockingly, the only best of three over the weekend that actually went two, three games. And in that third game, it was the latest menace on the rift, Mark Zach top broken blade absolutely having his way against Fnatic in that third game and that's with Razork having a poppy which is supposed to be some kind of counter to this new Zac top oh man it doesn't matter with the LEC old reliable coming on through for us with these match qualities specifically that G2 versus Fnatic series and as you laid out the Zac top lane pick was that menace was that destruction we've already mentioned earlier in the week that we saw it you know all the way through one day you saw it lck lpl lec lcs all the way through you saw the zach pick reigning terror and you're right i think this is insane when we have seen from zach and where this champion has been able to be and how it's been able to utilize 
that damage that's coming across from a guy that's got the amount of CCs and tankiness built in is pretty nutso whatso. And Mr. Broken Blade, he's introducing the LEC to some of that damage up in the top side after last year, Caps was busting it out in the mid lane. And how about, have we been seeing anyone play way better than Mr. Caps? He's really made this champion look like it should be permaban with the amount of damage he's doing. And even, you know, this third game, guys like Oscar Rin and Verdansen dodging almost every ability, but it's like you're playing Earth Aram against this champion. It's one of the scariest things that I never thought about when we entered into this era of 200 years champions. You're always so worried about the young kids. They're always the ones stepping up, being able to adapt and grow with the changes in the game, the 200 years of Riot game design. Never mind turning over the keys to someone like Caps and seeing what he's able to unlock on the champion. He says, you know, you thought this was pretty good in the support role with Barrel earlier. How about in the mid lane? And how about some of my skills? Absolutely a, a difference making champion and really one of these weekends that shows that you want to be the best in the LEC, you got to come for the crown and that crown is on G2's head. And that's the case in point why Caps has been at the top of this, his game for so many years now. Just watch him play these new champions when they come in. He just genuinely loves playing the game and uh, it helps when he wins so damn often. But just general joy for the game is why this guy has been around for so long. So G2 stays in that top spot. Fnatic competitive enough in this series that they hold on to that number three spot. And then you also had BDS getting the 2-0 against Team Vital. 2-0 didn't fully do that series justice, which is why Vitality has climbed into that top four because they definitely had avenues. They just kind of forgot how to play around to Darius, which is somehow not forgivable against BDS. I, it, look, it's going to run you into some problems if you're playing solo queue. It is going to be inexcusable against a team like BDS because you better believe Adam is going to know how to pressure point that one and take it to the house, take it to the nexus for a BDS victory. Yes, the series had more pushback, had more fight from Vitality, and I think that obviously the 2-0 scoreline tells you just on that initial look. But when we do step away from this series, I think it is still mostly that BDS focus, that power from Adam, of course, with his wheelhouse of champions, and then the progression that we have seen from the rest of this BDS roster compared to where they were last year leads us to think of what type of strength they can bring in to a top tier matchup. And they're going, you know, Vitality because they showed moments. Pateo has looked great, even though Hillisang had some bad moments. The bot lane has stepped up these last four games. I feel good against them, or for them, in loser's bracket when you're talking about most of the teams remaining as we jump further down this list. You know, Mad Lions, Koi, probably at the top uh, of that bottom loser's bracket and... SK was the most disappointing in their first opening round because you had higher expectations for them. But at the bottom of these top eight, it's still got to be Team Heretics. Unless there's a significant individual level up from some of their players, I don't see them taking a game. Pretty much everybody in this bottom section, you're excited to see in this lower bracket knowing that, oh, you know what? There's got to be this angle. Maybe this is the day that we see this other glimpse that we saw earlier come together and you can push this run even further type of situation. Looking at Team Heretics, I'm not even sure the, the most loyal of G2 1.5 fans have been able to come through and find that pot of gold in this roster and what they've been able to do this split because it is not equaled out to that pot of gold that you need it to be. Yeah, and especially the highest points were like the first few games that we were getting out of them. It's definitely been slowly uh, downward after that. So who knows? Maybe the veterans show up when their life is on the line, backs against the wall, but they got some serious leveling up to do in that loser's bracket. Uh, obviously, Rogue and Casey eliminated, didn't play, so they're sitting at the bottom too. But we did get a little bit of news that apparently nine games in, K Corp decides to throw all the blame on Yamato because he is out as head coach. Sounds like he might still be involved with the organization in some way, shape, or form, but at the very least, he's getting a serious demotion. Uh, not a fan of this move from K Corp. We knew that they had to be making fan, uh, making some changes for that next split, and everything was going to go on in this time period that you're away from that eye of the LEC and everyone performing on stage. 
getting rid of Yamato, I don't think was where I was going to point the finger very first from what was been going wrong with this K Corp lineup. Absolutely. The head coach, no matter how you slice it up, what percentage you want to put into it, he is responsible for the results not going the way that it is, whether that's about, you know, the cohesion, the preparedness, all these other type of things with this lineup. That's a different story. And when you got to be a little bit closer to, to know the real answer, but seeing this one on the outside looking in initially, this is not the change that I think needed to happen or is the change that I think is going to spark the change that's got to happen with this team. Fire in a coach after nine games when most of your players were the ones individually underperforming. We really are regular sports now, Mark. We made it. <laughs> this is not the lessons we were supposed to be taking from regular sports to be something like this. This, only, this feels like a TSM type of move yeah. to make a change Ooh, that, like that's an even bigger insult damn uh, that ain't the label that you want to be picking up especially if you're an lec squad yeah uh, we'll see if that makes anything we'll see if any roster changes end up happening for k corp but obviously a very forgettable debut split in the lec for the blue wall lck side of things less of a mix-up shake-up here than we got in some of the other regions obviously you still got the boys from bro sitting as the only winless squad and even both nongshim and drx are now showing that they can at least compete and take a game off of some of the teams ahead of them in the standings it's taken a few weeks, but that bottom picture of the LCK has started to take a little bit more shape and provide a little bit more pushback against some of these better squads in the league. It's not looking like almost two completely separate regions at this point, the way that it did. It started out at the year, as you mentioned, Nongshim, DRX, both providing a little bit of that pushback, a little bit more artillery against some of these top teams, not necessarily putting anything together where you are concerned at any type of level for these top teams dropping a series to with us, but it is absolutely getting more uh, contentious, I'll say, in the LCK. The the biggest thing to look at on this board, despite a worse record than Fear X, uh, D plus still plummets down three spots to that six spot. And I feel like this is a theme we've seen multiple times in the regular season. Everything's looking great. They're up 1 0 against Gen G. They end up Blowing the lead, getting smashed in game three, and since then, they get O2'd by the Kwangdong Freaks and Hanwha Life in pretty dominant fashion. It feels like Gen G broke the mental of D Plus so early in the regular season. And it's so, so rough to see happen to a squad like this because you see those games as you laid out. You know, you can understand, of course, maybe the first one, and then you get into that next series and the way that you had the advantages and, you know, kind of then throw it away with some sloppy play. I'm looking at aiming down in the bottom lane. I don't think has been as sharp or as responsible as you need him to be with his damage skill. And then as well, you're going through some of the growing pains, learning pains for a player like Lucid stepping up. Not necessarily that he has been poor, but it's been more so about what you're going to be exposed to up against the top level in the LCK. You're talking about a team, you know, that step up with Hanwha Life. I think that is a knockdown where you want to see D plus at the end of the split, end of the year, whatever that timeline is going to look like, be able to contend, contest with one of those type of teams, a Hanwha Life towards that upper area of the LCK that we expect them to be. Right now, this answer from Hanwha Life was a very resounding, we are ahead of you by quite a considerable margin. And an impressive bounce back in back-to-back -back series. I know they dropped the game to Nongshim, eventually did Hanwha, but after getting smacked, the beat down by T1, the complete opposite of how D-plus responded to losing to Gen G, Hanwha has bounced back in a big way, and because of that, they're rewarded with that bump back into the top three ahead of a squad like KT Rolster, who struggled against DRX, needed to come from behind win in game three. KT still a tricky team to rank. Yeah, especially because every once in a while we're seeing Team Liquid PO6 step into the jungle for the for the squad. That's not necessarily, I think, the ticket that a lot of That's people... That's not World's for. Team Liquid PO6. <laughs> no, That's no. full NA. Full LCS Team, team Liquid PO6 is what they've been getting, uh, I think, this last little bit here. And I think that needs to be a, a change that goes through for this team. Keen as well, you're talking what you can get with this team. You got to be looking at what he brought as a veteran to the team and perfect is now in as that rookie and what he's going to offer and how his growth is going. He's been pretty stable 
as far as rookies go, but individually, you're still waiting for that mega pop-off that we know that he is capable of. Then sandwiched in between that Han with KT, Kwang Dong takes D Plus's spot, climbs up to, even though they got 2 0'd by the now undefeated 6 0 Gen G. They had avenues in that game one. The first one was incredibly competitive, showed enough signs that you're still feeling very good and excited about KDF. Yes, the grow up, the glow up and blow up of this team is what we've been needing to see in the LCK. And finally, we're starting to see the payoff. We talked a lot about bulldog last year and the type of growth that he was showing and where he was going to take these next strides and he absolutely has done this for this team but it's not just about him that is the big thing of course mr bull down in the bottom lane is one of the changes that you're looking at but as well i think the whole team has really come together in this past week in the way that they have been able to play last squad on this list and you know we always it's still t1 genji your top two t1 had a very easy week drx and OK Savings Bank, Breon, they 2 owed both of them. And you can tell when T1 is at or near peak form because their games against the middle to low tier teams in the LCK, they legit feel like you're watching scripts. <laughs> it ain't no more slow starts for T1 at this point. It is absolutely pedal to the metal right from the get go. And I think everybody is playing at that top level. You had Yone, you had, of course, for Zeus in the top side, being a big threat, being that disruption to Zach that we already talked about for top laners and that type of threat that it's been. The rest of this lineup, all playing fantastic. The only hurdle is, again, going to be that Gen G hurdle at the top of the table for T1. They took very, very clean business when they cleaned out Hanwha earlier. This is the team that is going to be your challenger for Gen G at the top of the LCK. And, you know, even though that matchup did still go to three games, they're only one game behind Gen G in terms of the overall game score win loss. So still absolutely waiting for that rematch to see who's going to take that top spot. And more importantly, seeing if anyone can level up to these top two. That is really going to be the test. I think we've seen these glimpses, these little sparklings that these other teams kind of, you know, I'm talking about Hanwha life, maybe Kwangdong freaks really extending KT, these rest of them that need to just show a little bit more to get into that conversation where you can say, okay, maybe this is where they're taking off that one game. And then what happens in the next game of the series type of equation when you're talking about them at the top, T1 and Gen G are the only two that are in that upper echelon. Unmatched in the clouds right now are the titans in the LCK, but that's it today for League Unlocked.